Aloha gamers, I am Kea Girl. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going over some CWL premiere action. Dragon Rejects versus WHF. This is season two, week four. Alrighty, so for today we're going to be checking out some more attacks brought to you by Dragon Rejects. They went up against WHF2 in the premier CWL and they did lose 83 to 84. So quickly going over some stats, we can see here that they got all their attacks in um, both parties at 58 attacks won. Uh, both parties had two attacks lost. Moving down to um, the stars. You can see here where they did lose is that Dragon Rejects had 23 three stars versus 24 to WHF and seven two stars versus six to WHF. Luckily there were no zero star attacks. The percentage was 91% to 94% by WHF. Now a big shout out goes to Luke Mendels who had a six pack war and this was a fresh six pack. There were also six packs by Bayou and mm, trying to say his name again. I'm sorry if I say it wrong. M. Kiave. Good job guys on your six packs this war. There was one 99% attack so we will watch that towards the end of all the attacks going on today because everybody knows I love a good 99 story. It's absolutely amazing, breathtaking. The clutch just keeps me on the edge of my seat and there's nothing more frustrating yet entertaining than getting that 99. So yeah, let's get this kicked off. Alrighty, so for our first 9v9, our first attack of, or for today, we have number 18, being attacked by number 24 cap and he is going to be using a quad la loon the troops that are in this composition are going to be 19 loons some whiz for the funnel three lava hounds a lava hound in the cc his spells are going to be a heal rage poison three haste and two skelly spells he crushed it in about two minutes so he drops his wizard to the top. And again, when you're using this type of attack, you definitely need to establish a really strong funnel. You want to get an air defense or as many air defenses as possible. Hopefully the queen and whatever is sitting back in that CC. So he's activated his king and his queen is going to be working on that cannon. Hopefully she's going to be going up towards that air defense. They have lured the CC. So... He drops his poison and his queen should be taking care of that CC pretty quick. Now, Quad La Loons, you know, uh, it's only four Lava Hounds and not five. So he does, again, really need to take out at least one of the air defenses and hopefully the queen or the enemy Archer Queen. So his queen is now walking her way up towards the enemy Archer Queen. I'm not sure if she's going to be taking it down, but while that's happening, he's now dropped his loons and is making a really nice pathing from one end of the base, as you can already, you can already see where this is going. It's a really good, really good direction that he had a really good plan for this base. Those hounds are making their way across and it's now joined up with the other hound. His loons have been just easily going from one defense to the next defense and just making a really, really good pathing from one side to the other. You can see there was still plenty of time on the clock and this was really an easy three star, really good attack by Cap and really good planning by him too. Really impressive attack here. Okay, so next up for our 9v9 action, we have number 20 getting attacked by number 22, Bayou. And the attack strategy he is gonna be using is a queen walk go bow ho type of thing. So a little bit light on the hogs though for a normal go bow ho, but this troop composition consists of two golems, four healers obviously on the queen, he does have bowlers in the CC, and he's got seven wiz, seven wizards, two baby drags, and, 
and hogs and a couple of cleanup troops. His spellage is gonna be a heal, a rage, two jumps, and two poisons. He does crush this base in approximately two minutes and 14 or 15 seconds. So he starts off at the bottom of this base and with a queen walk and you want to use a witch or so you want to use a wizard or a dragon or something like that just to help establish the direction of your queen walk because sometimes with a queen walk what a lot of people do is they do not get a really good direction going for her and she can end up walking in a direction you never really wanted her to so she's now with queen walks one of the big factors is that you want to take out the cc you kind of want to take out the queen or you're just using her to get out a lot of the inside of a base like this one there's the air defenses are kind of towards the outside so if she goes in she's going to get a lot of damage on the inside of this base especially towards all that splash damage so the bowlers and the golems are coming in at the top he's using the dragon to make sure that everything stays funneled towards the inside and the jump has been placed those bowlers are going to take out the queen hopefully really quickly while that golem is absorbing as much damage from all the defense as possible. So as you can tell, this queen is just walking around the base and just clearing up this entire side or this entire section. While the bowlers and the golem are doing so much damage on the inside of this base, you can already see 44 seconds left of this attack and it's really just a matter of cleaning up and using the hogs in just a good just properly placing his hogs it's really an easy three star really good job bayou for crushing this base and making it look easy so next up we have number 22 being attacked by number 16 i want to say his name is witty i'm so sorry if i said that wrong but he is going to be using kind of a go below Go Bo La Loon <laughs> attack. And in this attack, he's going to be using two Lava Hounds, two Golems, 12 Loons, some Whiz and Bowlers and Minions for funneling and cleanup. And of course, he has a Bowlers in the CC. His spells are going to be a Heal, a Rage, a Jump, two Poisons, and two Hastes. Now he does this attack in two minutes and 54 seconds, meaning he only had a few seconds left on the clock. It was a nail biting type of attack. So he's dropped his two dragons. Uh, where did he drop them? Um, his golem has been established and the funnel of his wizards have been established towards the outside of the west side of this base i guess more north northwest not just west and he is establishing a really hard funnel there is a wonderful tesla that kind of pops up and those are really never fun when you're trying to get your your funnel established and you want to make sure that everything goes in the direction it needs to go like his bowlers now have already started walking towards the side instead of going into the inside of the base he could have panicked but he doesn't his poison gets dropped his rage gets dropped um, his king has been activated and the queen is going in and doing what he wanted her to do, which is at least take out two air defenses, enemy CC and enemy queen. So now if he can get to, he's got two air defenses left, which sometimes is a little hard to do when you only have two hounds. So he re does really need to drop things um, carefully to make sure that his hounds live long enough to protect the loons from as much splash damage as possible. So he dropped his haste, his loons are making their way up to that air defense, that air sweeper is kind of causing a bit of trouble there. So um, the loon does get that, they do get the, that air defense down and that hound is making its way up to the air defense. It does pop and there's not much left on the air defense. So good job there i think the bowlers had taken it out i kind of missed it but those loons are now a little bit bunched up but luckily they're going to start taking out all those defenses at the top and that's 
really all that's left as far as defense goes. So the rest of this base is owned, it's done, it's completed, and he has a heal left. I'm not really sure if he swags the heal, but he's definitely owned this base. Great job, Witty. You are an amazing attacker. Next up, we have number 23 being attacked by number 28, Madus Gana. So Madus Gana is going to be using a Gola Loon, and his troop composition is going to be a Golem. It's going to be three Hounds. Um, a third is going to be in the CC, and he has 18 Loons, some Wiz, Wall Riggers, Baby Drags, Archers, all that jazz for fun stuff. He's got two Rages, a Jump, three Haste, and a Poison. So dropping that dragon, baby dragon, he's now dropped the golem, he's getting his funnel set, the wizards are coming in, he sends in the test wall breaker, which is really important to do by the way, because there's nothing worse than sending in all your wall breakers, and one of those stupid little irritating bombs goes ahead and destroys them, and you walk away feeling like, no! I've talked about this a few times, there's nothing worse than a wall breaker fail. I mean, nothing worse than a wall breaker fail. I mean, it can ruin an entire attack, especially if your attack is like this one, where you need to take out the enemy CC, the enemy queen, and air defenses because you're doing an air raid. If Or even a hog raid, you really need to make sure that if you're trying to get into the heart of the base, to get things taken out and cleared up, you know, a wall breaker can cost you the entire raid. Sometimes there's just no plan B when everything is set on making sure that you clear certain obstacles out of the way. So he's now doing a really long, I mean, wow, that was such a long stretch for a hound. He used his, his, um, CC hound in order to make that long stretch across. Sometimes people want to use that as the last hound so they can get more pups towards the end for cleanup, but he used it at the beginning so he could really stretch it out as long as he could. He's got those loons coming in, still has a hound up and flapping away, and he's got one little section of the base where there's some point damage and splash damage going on, and those loons are just going to overpower it, even, those, even with those skellies up and running. Everything is going to be taken out in no time at all. And the wizards that he had held back are now cleaning up on the outside. And you can see now there's a minute, there's 40, 40 seconds left of this attack. That last hound is popped. There's enough pups to go ahead and start cleaning up. I think everything just about has something picking away at it. And it was a really good overpowered attack. Great job, Medusa. Medusa gun runner no medusa gunner medusa 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 gunner medusa gunner yes all right good job okay i'm gonna stop now Alrighty, moving on we have number 25 being a pack being attacked by number 23 taj baba and he is going to be using a golalunian golalunian his troop composition is going to be a golem two lava hounds, a hound in the CC making it three, 17 loons, seven minions, and six whiz and a couple archers. His spellage is gonna be a heal, a rage, a jump, three haste, and a poison. So he starts by dropping off that loon at the far west corner there, and he, while he goes ahead and drops his golem down in the south, his golem it followed up with the wizards, drops down the jump. Just as the wizards are done clearing out those um, gold storages, a hound is in the CC, which is really irritating at times because that queen can sit there and peck away at that silly little hound instead of taking care of the enemy CC, I mean, sorry, the, the enemy queen and other things that need to get done. Um, so sometimes a hound is a really, really great choice for enemy CC and his queen though has gone ahead and she's taking care of those pups and she's gonna go and get the rest of the inside of this base now he does have four air defenses up and I'm not really sure how far she's planning or he was planning on her getting but she at least did take out the enemy queen and the enemy CC so he's dropped his lava hounds at the 
um, northwest corner and drop that last lava hound um, connecting to those two that were already dropped the loons are coming in they're super clumped but they're doing a really good job a uh, really good use of his spells right there and there's only one air defense left and that queen should be taking it down yeah there it goes it goes down and sends a pop um sends another loon in on that wonderful tesla that was uh sitting there trying to cause some distraction and there are so many pups there are so many minions um there's still some whiz and he's still got archers he's got more than he needs for getting the job done this is such an overpowered attack great job taj baba um amazing attack and this is how you kill it with a golalunian golalunian because of the minions yeah so for our last attack of the day, our last 9v9, we have number 29 getting attacked by number 15, Michael White. And he is going to be using a stoned hubo. His chip collection consists of two golems, 16 hogs, seven whiz. He's got a couple loons there just in case he wants to get some, I don't know, scrap damage taken care of. And then in his CC, he has some bowlers. For spellage, he has a heal, a rage, two jumps, and two poisons. Let's dive into this. Whoa, no, no, don't fast forward. So he's dropped that golem. That hog is helping clean up, uh, and especially with that troll Tesla around, nothing more irritating than a troll Tesla. Those wizards are coming in, and he is going to be establishing a really wide funnel here, it looks like. I am a big fan. Oh, there are three golems. How did I misread that? Um, three golems, and I love a stoned go, uh, a stoned hobo go yeah stoned hobo yeah i love it it's fun it's great it's it's a, it's a peach so that poison is being dropped the enemy queen is coming in the king is joining her those bowlers are coming in and they're gonna wreak havoc in that section of the base the one thing with a stoned hobo is you want to make sure that kill squad does as much damage as possible here he does have quite a few hogs so usually with stone hobos you actually see a little less hogs a little heavier on the wizards but he has had a really easy time creating that funnel so he could really take advantage and use a lot more space for the hogs now with the golems attracting attention from the point defense or splash damage uh, defenses. He's got to be careful how he trickles in his hogs. He wants to trickle them in circular, as you can tell here, or surgical. And he is going to be, as soon as there is a tower that is locked onto a golem or something that's centralized, he's going to be dropping in those hogs so he can take full advantage of everything being distracted and hopefully keep his hogs alive as long as possible those hogs are going to survive a really nice long time there's only a couple splash damage um defense is up and those skellies are attracted to that golem and he's just going to sit banging on a wall like a really smart person and <laughs> the hogs have come in and all the defenses are taken down and now all that's left is clean up and while his golems and his queen go ahead and beat on walls, the rest of his troops are going to end up taking out the rest of this base. Amazing job, Michael White. So great war done by Dragon Rejects versus WHF2. I am big fans of both clans. I have friends in both clans, so I absolutely can't say that I was rooting for either or to get the victory. It definitely was an amazing, amazing war. And good luck to WHF in the next few weeks with their CWO wars. Of course, Dragon Rejects, thank you so much for letting me do your war recaps. You guys are an amazing bunch. I definitely look forward to see what you guys have in the rest of this season. Again, if you guys want to keep up with what's going on in CWL, I will make sure in my description, I have certain people that I follow that I really strongly recommend. They will be posting CWL videos for other clan people for premiere for invite and they're just an amazing group of youtubers that i'm connected with i absolutely love them and appreciate them make sure you guys stay tuned to what's going on in cwl and make sure you guys are keeping on top of it 
It's an amazing event. I absolutely love it. And I hope you guys are loving it too. So peace out. Have a good week. Okay, so next up for our 9v9 action, we have number 20 getting attacked by number 22, Bei Yu. And the attack strategy he is going to be using is a queen walk, go, bow, ho type of thing. So a little bit light on the hogs though for a normal go, bow, ho. But this troop composition consists of two golems, four healers, obviously on the queen. He does have bowlers in the CC, and he's got seven wiz, seven wizards, two baby drags, um, and hogs, and a couple of cleanup troops. His spellage is gonna be a heal, a rage, two jumps, and two poisons. He does crush this base in approximately two minutes and 14 or 15 seconds. So he starts off at the bottom of this base and with a queen walk and you want to use a witch or so you want to use a wizard or a dragon or something like that just to help establish the direction of your queen walk because sometimes with a queen walk what a lot of people do is they do not get a really good direction going for her and she can end up walking in a direction you never really wanted her to. So she's now with queen walks. One of the big factors is, is sitting back in that CC. So he's activated his king and his queen is going to be working on that cannon. Hopefully she's going to be going up towards that air defense. They have lured the CC. So he drops his poison and his queen should be taking care of that CC pretty quick. Now, quad laloons, you know, uh, it's only four lava hounds and not five. So he does, again, really need to take out at least one of the air defenses and hopefully the queen or the enemy archer queen. So his queen is now walking her way up towards the enemy archer queen. I'm not sure if she's going to be taking it down, but while that's happening, he's now dropped his loons and is making a really nice pathing from one end of the base as you can already you can already see where this is going. It's a really good really good direction that he had a really good plan for this base. Those hounds are making their way across and it's now joined up with the other hound. His loons have been just easily going from one defense to the next defense and just making a really, really good pathing from one side to the other. You can see there was still plenty of time on the clock and this was really an easy 
three star, really good attack by Cap and really good planning by him too. Really impressive attack here. Aloha gamers, I am Kea Girl. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going over some CWL premiere action. Dragon Rejects versus WHF. This is season two, week four. Alrighty, so for today we're going to be checking out some more attacks brought to you by Dragon Rejects. They went up against WHF2 in the premier CWL and they did lose 83 to 84. So quickly going over some stats, we can see here that they got all their attacks in um, both parties at 58 attacks won. Uh, both parties had two attacks lost. Moving down to um, the stars. You can see here where they did lose is that Dragon Rejects had 23 three stars versus 24 to WHF and seven two stars versus six to WHF. Luckily, there were no zero star attacks. The percentage was 91% to 94% by WHF. Now, a big shout out goes to Luke Mendels, who had a six pack war, and this was a fresh six pack. There were also six packs by Bayou, and is that you want to take out the CC. You kind of want to take out the queen, or you're just using her to get out a lot of the inside of a base. Like this one, there's the air defenses are kind of towards the outside. So if she goes in, she's gonna get a lot of damage on the inside of this base, especially towards all that splash damage. So the bowlers and the golems are coming in at the top. He's using the dragon to make sure that everything stays funneled towards the inside. And the jump has been placed. Those bowlers are gonna take out the queen, hopefully really quickly while that golem is absorbing as much damage from all the defense as possible. So as you can tell, this queen is just walking around the base and just clearing up this entire side or this entire section, while the bowlers and the golem are doing so much damage on the inside of this base. You can already see 44 seconds left of this attack, and it's really just a matter of cleaning up and using the hogs in just a good, just properly placing his hogs. It's really an easy three star, really good job Bayou for crushing this base and making it look easy. So next up we have number 22 being attacked by number 16. I wanna say his name is Witty. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Mm, trying to say his name again, I'm sorry if I say it wrong, M. Kiave. Good job guys on your six packs this war. There was one 99% attack, so we will watch that towards the end of all the attacks going on today because everybody knows I love a good 99 story. It's absolutely amazing, breathtaking. The clutch just keeps me on the edge of my seat and there's nothing more frustrating yet entertaining than getting that 99. So yeah, let's get this kicked off. Alrighty, so for our first 9v9, our first attack of, or for today, we have number 18 being attacked by number 24, Cap. And he is going to be using a quad la loon. The troops that are in this composition are going to be 19 loons, some whiz for the funnel, three lava hounds, a lava hound in the CC. His spells are gonna be a heal, rage, poison, three haste, and two skelly spells. He crushed it in about two minutes. So he drops his wizard to the top. And again, when you're using this type of attack, you definitely need to establish a really strong funnel. You wanna get an air defense or as many air defenses as possible Hopefully the queen and whatever